my first question to you is have you studied anything about solar system sun all these things before um i i know the planets so that's very much rotation revolution that's all i've studied haven't how many planets it. how many planets are there um eight eight yeah. name them in order Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptun, Neptune. Very good. You know how much ever. Let me tell you how much ever um astrophysics I have done. I always get confused between Uranus and Neptune's position. Still, I get <laughs> confused. Okay, but that is kind of thing which is not getting cured. It's always there with me. Okay, so <laughs> you have told me all these planets, and we know that. we are living in a planet which is earth yeah and for the human kind it is only earth that we know of which hosts life in it yeah in uh, we have done a lot of research on other planet and till now we do not have a proper evidence of life on other planets or the moons of other planets yes now when i say moons what is it a right statement that i say moon or should i say natural satellites of other planet moons of other planet or natural satellites of other planet which is a proper statement natural satellites why why shouldn't i say moons of other planet because it might also not have a moon might have mm -hmm. other like asteroids i, I don't know Okay, then you are confused. I got it. Yeah. All right. I never did this topic, like except the planets. I never. Okay, yeah. you have just only done planets. Yeah. Okay, but not as a solar system as a whole. No. Okay, so before we get into solar system, that is a thing that I won't tell you. Okay. Hmm. there is one thing one concept which i want to tell you before we actually get into solar system and the topics here yeah our solar system consists of a star mm -hmm. which is a sun which is at the center of the solar system yeah around the star there are many things going around not only eight planets mm -hmm. but with those eight planets there are many more things okay Yeah. First one is the Mercury, the nearest one, mm -hmm. which is a rocky planet. Yeah. It does not have atmosphere because the atmosphere has been removed completely be because of the solar flares that are constantly coming from sun. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just what I'm I'm not starting the actual topic now, but I'm giving an overview of solar system before we get into it. Okay. Yeah. Then we have Venus. Hmm. Okay. Venus is a Gaseous planet. It has it's completely filled with sulfur gas. Hmm. Yeah. Sulfur gas and sulfur is a poisonous gas. And you know because of that, it has gas in it. It yeah. has ability to trap a lot of heat. That okay. is the reason why Venus is the most hottest planet. So it's the hottest planet. We might argue saying that Mercury should be hottest because it is nearby. But Mercury is completely rock; mm. it's not get trapped inside Mercury. But Venus is second after Mercury, but the heat gets trapped inside it because of the dense atmosphere of sulfur. Sulfur oh. trapped heat, and because of that, Mercury is the most. It's the hottest planet of the solar system. Okay. And you know, after the Mercury, we have Earth. earth has water earth it's a blue planet because it has water it has land it has trees it has all the life biology and biomes everything hmm? in it okay yeah. it has a proper atmosphere hmm? which is able to give us life and the reason why scientists believe earth was able to sustain life because it comes under goldy lock zone okay scientists believe that every star Has a Goldilocks. Okay. So for Sun, that Goldilocks zone is around the Earth and near the Mars. It is like a just a zone where life can be formed. Oh. Okay. And how these Goldilocks zones are formed, keeping that 
temperature mm. how far it is so it should be the temperature should be good enough so that it can have life in it life cannot exist in uh, 2000 degree kelvin same way mm. life cannot exist in 100 kelvin or minus 300 kelvin mm. minus, yeah. minus 300 celsius it cannot exist there also so it mm-hmm. requires a proper zone where this existence of life can happen mm. and scientists know more than that there are many other factors which 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 is not required for us to right now to know and that zone is called goldilocks zone and scientists say that every star has a goldilocks zone if it is a small star goldilocks zone will be nearby if it is a big star goldilocks zone will be far away okay. it is just a zone where life can form and mm-hmm. that's how looking when scientists study the stars they predict the goldilocks zone and they find out that if there is any planet in that goldilocks zone and they start try to theorize that is life possible in that planet if yeah. at all if at all scientists find out that in that place a planet is there water is there water is essential for life mm-hmm. life starts from water if at all scientists theorize that their water is there and it is in the goldilocks zone there are 50% chances that life might be there on the planet so mm. what is one theory of scientists then after earth we have mars yeah mars is the red planet mm. the redness comes because of the soil texture iron mm. it's as iron field content of iron is very high huge in that soil that's the reason why it is reddish in color mm. okay. you can think it has a desert it's a desert yeah, it's a desert it's a desert once upon a time it was theorized that mars had life hmm? there were many path of water you know like when water flows it creates a path right yeah scientists discovered those paths uh oh. which says that water was flowing once upon a time here but unfortunately the what could have gone wrong there is the magnetic field of the mars died away disappeared you know earth uh, also has a magnetic field yeah okay yeah that's very important earth has a magnetic field that is the reason why solar flares cannot uh, end. Uh, okay it push it repels away from it right? repels away the solar flares and those solar flares are seen in the poles and they we call it as aurora borealis exactly uh they now have... there's higher like the solar flares are more aggressive that's why there's yeah now the solar activity is increased that's why the 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 solar you know aurora borealis was seen in, in a larger region yeah but still it did not affect us hmm. all thanks to earth's magnetic field Atmos- and why earth's magnetic field is active is because of the earth's inner core you know earth's inner core which is basically do it and yeah a smart method so yeah. now the problem there with mars is this disappeared the problem mm-hmm. there with mars is that this disappeared and there was no magnetic field mm-hmm. because of which what has happened solar flares entered when solar yeah. flares entered it took away the atmosphere and yeah. the atmosphere is gone what is the result of the planet that is what happened with mars uh going into complete desert now and if earth loses its magnetic field same fate for earth also oh uh, right yeah and magnetic field of earth keeps changing direction we will see that later okay yeah so then we go to jupiter but before jupiter there is a belt mm, yeah this Asteroid. rock Asteroid. Asteroid. Yeah. okay now these asteroids are only found in asteroid belt but nowhere else in the solar system okay they are a belt of rock which is going around sun so i would say it is a ring of sun saturn okay. has ring hmm saturn has ring isn't it yeah it is just like sun's ring it is sun is there at the center and these rocks form the ring for the sun Oh, they theorize okay. that this is a incomplete planet. Okay. A planet could Ju- not form here. There was supposed to be a planet after Mars and before oh. Jupiter, 
it could not form a planet so it oh. remained rock forever oh. and the reason why it could not form a planet is because of jupiter oh. i'll tell you about jupiter in some time okay. now the biggest asteroid in the asteroid belt to series c e r e s hmm it is spherical in shape usually you see asteroids are rocky shape they do not have a proper shape yeah okay for a planet you see every planet has a rocky shape because they have enough mass and gravity to make them round hmm yeah okay but here what happened they did not have enough mass yeah so they could not become a spherical shaped you know object mm -hmm. oh. but there is only one rock which could manage it and that's a dwarf planet existing in the asteroid belt which is called ceres sure okay, okay. we will see that we are going to see about solar system only right then mm -hmm. comes jupiter now yeah. jupiter is so massive that mm -hmm. it is competing with sun for power gravitational strength okay the gravity of jupiter is so strong that can that it can affect the revolution of earth and mars together oh when earth and mars comes near closer to you know jupiter jupiter, jupiter can pull earth towards it oh is that why we are able to see jupiter sometimes in the sky it may like pull towards No, no, no. That is something else. Okay. The pulling of Jupiter has some other effect on Earth. Okay. And that comes under climate study. Climate study. Yeah. Oh. Ice age. Do you know that ice age warm age keeps repeating again and again? Yeah. That is the reason. One of the reason is Jupiter's pull. Oh. Okay. And Jupiter's second uh, effect was it could not. it did not allow the asteroids to form a planet so they stayed as rocks itself so jupiter has done these problems in the solar system because it was very huge now oh. earth has atmosphere right yeah the reason why earth has atmosphere is because earth has good gravity to hold all the rocks yes all the rocks air yeah. molecules all right because mm. earth is able to hold all these air molecules earth mm. is having a atmosphere oh uh, okay yeah but again if the solar flare comes the atmosphere will disappear oh even mars has the ability to hold the atmosphere mm. but other than that see now these these small four planets that you have seen mm. uh mercury venus earth mars they are called inner planets because they're inside the asteroid belt yeah they are called terrestrial planet because they are mostly rocky mostly rocky the, yeah okay. and they are smaller sized hmm yeah. but now go let's go to jupiter hmm? they are so heavy that they can accumulate so much of atmosphere that the atmosphere becomes so dense hmm they are called gas giants gas giants after this all the four planets which are there they are mm. gas giants okay okay jupiter we start with the jupiter mm. a lot of you know hurricanes happens in jupiter the atmosphere is very violent mm. i've not yeah. seen the land in jupiter jupiter also has a land it has a rocky part but we can never see it oh we can never see it because it is covered by a dense 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 atmosphere huge so yeah. it is so dense that if the planet is this much the atmosphere will be double triple size of that oh that much dense atmosphere it is yeah so there is no space probe or there is no rockets that can go inside that atmosphere it's hot there's too much high pressure high say. pressure and turbulence nothing yeah. can go through that So if something oh. can go through that, we can reach the land on Jupiter. So there must be some rock planet. Must be having some rock, mm. right? Yeah. So that is the case of Jupiter, and Jupiter also has ring and has the now currently it has the highest number of moon. 
Kai Sambara? Moons. Sorry, not moons, natural satellites. Yeah. You should know that moon is the name of our natural satellite. Okay. Mars has two natural satellites. Yeah. Jupiter has, I don't know the count right now, it keeps changing. 160 something. It has natural satellites. Yeah. First it was Saturn. Then then now Jupiter has become the highest. The biggest uh, the biggest moon is I think uh, Europa. There are four oh. major uh, natural satellites. Europa, Io, Io, Ganymede. So these moons are some moons are even bigger than uh, Earth. Mm. Okay. Then we go to Saturn. Saturn, it's a ringed planet. It's an icy planet. It contains ice. Yeah. Jupiter does not contain ice. Because the distance is high enough so that ice is getting formed. Water is not staying as liquid. Water starts to be in ice. And other gases are also becoming ice there. Okay. It has ring and a lot of moons. Now to Saturn, what comes? After uh, Uranus. Yeah. Uranus is also an ice giant. Now we yeah. could call it as gas giant. It's an ice giant. Oh, then okay. Neptune is also ice giant. So I, I, we don't know much about it, but they both are ice giants. Yeah. Okay. Now yeah. let me ask, tell you, there was one planet. There was oh, one planet Pluto. before. Yes. Until 2006. Hmm? Pluto was considered as a planet. Yeah. But in 2006, what happened? Some of the big brains came, met together, and they told that the definition of planet should change. Everything that goes around sun is not a planet. Yeah. I'll tell you what happened. Sun is there. Planets are going around. Asteroid is also going around sun. Comets mm -hmm. are also going around. I'll tell you what are comets also. Yeah. Everything is going around sun. So can they become planet? No. No. Even moon. Our moon is going around. Our, see, natural satellite should go around a planet. Planet mm -hmm. should go around the star. Yeah. Now they decided that there should be a proper definition for a planet. A planet. Okay. Mm. Because, you know, by 2006, the technology was increasing. Mm. And they were starting to discover more and more and more planets. Mm. So they thought that if we put everything in planets, then how are the people like you going to study so many planets? Oh. So they decided there should be a definition, proper definition. They are told. Is it if they have an atmosphere? No. Hmm. Mercury does not have atmosphere. Oh, right. Yeah. I'll, I will tell you what are the definitions. First, round space. Yeah. So, asteroids are out of it. Yeah. Okay. Second, one should be round. Second is what was the second one? Yeah, they should. Uh, have you know they should have mass high enough to clear their surrounding. See, this oh. statement is very clear. You should understand this statement. They should have mass high enough to clear their surrounding. Mm -hmm. Clear their surrounding. That means they should not be disturbed by anything that is going around them. Like asteroids. Yes. Okay. They should be heavy. They should be massive enough to clear their surrounding. Yeah. Now, there was a problem with Pluto here. Yeah. Pluto's orbit was little different. Not like other eight. Mm -hmm. Other eights were proper circles. Kind of circles you can see. But Pluto... Elliptical. Elliptical. And it was at some point, it was crossing Neptune and coming inside Oh, it went through Neptune. Yeah, it comes through Neptune and goes out. So it was crossing the Neptune. So at oh. one certain point in time, it will be closer than Neptune to Sun. Oh, okay. There was a problem here. The problem was, usually it's very rare, but still it is a problem. The problem is, Neptune is very big. Yeah. It's very small. Yeah. Now, if at all... At some point in the ages, if Pluto and Neptune, while crossing, they come close close by, nearby. Mm -hmm. 
Neptune might catch Pluto. And like pull it into. Uh, and Pluto will become moon or sa natural satellite of Neptune in future. Oh, uh, okay. Understood. Yeah. That is the reason why Pluto was taken out. It could not clear its surrounding. Okay. And that's how other planets also were taken. Hmm. And the third thing which I was thinking, it is they should have they should be spherical. But Pluto had the first and the third thing. The first one, it went around sun. Second, hmm. it was spherical. But it could not clear its surrounding. So Pluto hmm. was downgraded into dwarf planet. Dwarf planet. Okay. After 2006, people have two things. Planet, dwarf planet. Ceres is also a dwarf planet. I told you about Ceres in the asteroid. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was a sphere. But still, it cannot become, you know, it still it cannot become a planet because it's dwarf planet. Yeah. And after Pluto, there are there is a vast thing, and you call it as Kuiper belt. Q U I P E R. Have you heard about it? Q U I P E R. I -E -R Kuiper belt. No, no, no. Okay. After Pluto, there's a Kuiper belt. Okay. Yeah. Now in this Kuiper belt. Many dwarf planets are there, which are undiscovered. Mm. Many comets are there. Mm. Now that yeah. comets and asteroids are two different things. I think we will see that. Many comets. Comets exist in Kuiper Belt. Okay. They are like visitors. They come from Kuiper Belt. They visit the, they visit the uh, sun and they go back to the Kuiper Belt. They are like visitors. So oh. when they're coming near the sun, that is when we see them. It's like shooting stars. Yes. Oh. But shooting stars are something else. Okay. They are not shooting stars. So, you know, there is something called um, comet, asteroid, meteor, meteorites. Yeah. Okay. Meteors are called shooting stars. Meteors. Okay. We will see that detailed discussion in the chapter later. Okay. Okay. So yes. these, uh, you know, these Kuipers, uh, these uh, comets are like, they just come for a pilgrimage around the sun. Mm. So keep going around. Like, that is when you see them, these, uh, you know, uh, see these, we see these comets, okay? So yeah, this is how you, our solar system is. So after Kuiper belt, we believe that something, there's something called Oots cloud, double O-R-T-S. Oots cloud, we believe that it is a remnant of solar system formation. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. I think here also we might be studying about how solar system formed. I don't know if we're going to study or not, but there is a study of how solar system formed. There we will see that it's basically formed from clouds, dust and clouds. So, so the, Big Bang. Not Big Bang. Big Bang is formation of universe, not the solar system. Oh, okay. Okay. So... Yes. Those remaining dust and cloud are Oots cloud now. That's what we believe. Okay. So this is the solar system. Hmm. I have given you a detailed view of solar system. Is that thing clear to you? Yeah. So with that detailed view, now you will be able to understand the things which I'm going to discuss about. Okay, sure. Okay. Yeah. So, so now you must be knowing about solar system, the structure of solar system, the center of solar system is a sun. Sun mm -hmm. is a star. Now there is a different study for stars also. That's a different part. I'm not going there right now. Different types of star, and what are the life type? What is the lifespan of a star? Mm -hmm. And what are the different categories of stars? Sun forms. Sun is a G type star. Mm -hmm. yeah. Different types of category also, which also we will be seeing. So now, right now, what we will do, let's stick with what is there and what we are going to see right now. Okay. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, first we discuss what is the form of the Earth. Mm? Earth is a planet that we are living in, right? Yeah. Spherical. Yeah, and let me tell you one more thing. This astrophysics is very theoretical. There are no problems. There are no 
do you know that physics also has a lot of problems so formula uh, yeah. do you like doing that hmm? do you like doing that physics yeah yeah so physics has two sides so right now we are starting with theory okay so okay. It's, it's it's more like storytelling for me it's like more like storytelling here but when we go to force work done mechanics that yeah. is completely different that you have problems you have to apply the formula there will be numericals here mm. you don't have those numericals here you lot have you a lot of things you have to retain in the memory mm yeah that's what uh, we are doing right now okay yeah all right now let us so earth right mm. earth is not a perfect sphere yes do you know yeah this is it is a complete spheroid oh okay it is not a perfect sphere earth's orbit is also not perfect sphere no oh, sorry a perfect circle uh, okay uh, yeah that's why we have the seasons so yeah, it's more it's for the survey yeah. yeah seasons are there because of earth's orbit is not a perfect sphere if it was a perfect sphere there will not be any seasons So yeah. as a perfect circle, it there won't be any season. Yeah. Way Earth is also not a sphere. Hmm. Earth is not a perfect sphere. Rather, Earth is an oblate spheroid. Hmm. You must be thinking, what is this oblate spheroid? It is a yeah. geometrical figure which I'm going to show you. Oblate spheroid. Let me screenshot and show you. This is how oblate spheroid looks like. This is how oblate spheroid looks like. Now I don't see let, it, sir. Let me show you. Yeah. Can you see? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So, what is I... this oblate spheroid? Spheroid basically looking like. Tell, can you describe this? Uh, how it looks like? Sort of flattened like this. Equator is more flattened, isn't it? Yeah. It's like you take a spherical ball and push it like this. Yeah. So the equatorial part becomes a little more bulged. Yeah. yeah. And pole parts come a little close by. Yeah. Right. That's called oblate spheroid. Oh. Okay. Now, can you tell me the reason why Earth is oblate spheroid? Um. So because of the axis. Axis, no. Mm. What could make this Earth an object spheroid? There are also a lot of physics involved, you know, centrifugal force, centrifugal forces reason. Oh, okay. You know, when you rotate something, it hmm? pushes away, is it? It. Yeah. When you rotate something fast, it kind, it's kind of pushing itself away. Yeah. Axis. So that is the reason why the equatorial part is actually pushing itself, little extending itself. That's the reason why it kind of extends itself in the equator. It becomes an oblate spheroid, and this is happening because of rotation. Oh, you okay. can imagine. Now there is something that you will be imagine. We might have to imagine. Hmm? I take a ball, hmm? sponge ball. Yeah. I keep rotating. Does that change shape? No. Doesn't change shape. Little bit. If you keep rotating like this. Okay, I would ask you this question. If I want to make it an oblate spheroid, how fast should mm. I rotate it? Very fast. Like... Very fast, right? Yeah. Let's yeah. Come. Now let's come to Earth. Earth is rock. Mm. If this kind of rock is becoming an oblate spheroid, how fast are we rotating them? Very fast. Yes, yeah. we are actually rotating very fast. We don't. But it doesn't know. seem that that fast because it's a big planet. Yes, all right. thanks to gravity also. Yeah. Actually, Earth is rotating very fast because if you do some calculation, like if you if you if you find out the circumference of the Earth and you divide mm -hmm. by twenty four hours, you would see that it is rotating extremely fast. I think we have not. They are not given it here. It's rotating extremely fast, 
and that fast rotation is the reason why the ablet spheroid is formed. Oh, okay. Earth is rock, isn't it? Yeah. A sponge ball, if it has to become an oblate spheroid, how fast it has to rotate? Yeah, very, very fast. If a rock has to become an oblate spheroid, that also is rotating very fast, right? Yeah, even faster. Yeah. Yeah. So we are not knowing that speed because of gravity. And let mm. me tell you, if, you know, right, when something is rotate, when something is moving and you stop it, what happens? It, you go forward. You're going in a yeah. car and you crash, you go forward, right? Yeah. Just imagine if the earth stops for one second. Yeah. You will so be... then everyone like moves fast. Yeah. People from India will reach Thailand and uh, people from US will reach uh, Africa. Oh. oh. Yeah, true. That is how fast it is. Yeah. Inertia will cause the people to fly away. Yeah. Even gravity cannot help. Gravity is keeping us right now on the earth because we are rotating uniformly. Yeah. But if that inertia comes in between, then uh, it's like a massive earthquake. The most oh. devastating earthquake of the earth. And you know mm -hmm. there are tectonic plates also. Yeah. yeah. Even tectonic plates will be you know, shattered and flying away. All those things like movie scenes, but we can't imagine right now. All right. Yeah. So everything will happen if earth stops. Right? Yeah. Now yeah. quickly, you, if you see here, uh, the radius of the earth is 6371 kilometer. Mount Everest is the highest above the sea level. Mm -hmm. What is the deepest point? Um, what's it called? Some trench. Is it Atlantic trench? No. Uh, Marina trench. Yeah. Mariana trench. Mariana. Okay. So it is, it goes 13 kilometers below. Yeah. So we say that the deepest point is bigger than the highest point. Highest point is Everest. Yeah. And Everest is caused because of tectonic activity. Indo-Australian yeah. plate hit the, you know, Eurasian plate. Eurasian plate. And then yeah. it like, since it's both continental plates, it falls. Converged and they became Mount Everest. Yeah. Earth radius is slightly different in poles and equator. And the reason is, it is a oblate spiral. Uh, the, the radius in uh, equator is more, the radius in pole is less because it is a oblate spiral. Yeah. If the Earth were shrunk at the pole, pole uh, polar radius by 11 centimeters, then how much the equatorial radius will be larger? This is a mathematical thing. We don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. what is this image? Hmm? What um, is this image? Isn't it the uh, isn't it the uh, moon? Yeah. It's the, earth from the moon. Exactly, earth from the moon. And why is the shadow being formed like this? Because the sun is hitting like since earth is rotating, the sun is here, so it's hitting at it from this angle. Yes, this particular image is called Earth Rise. Earth rise. Earth mm. rise. Taken by uh, William Andrew Anders in 1968. It's mm. you see that Earth from Moon. If you see Earth, Earth also will look like a Moon. It also will have different faces. Oh, okay. It has different faces, right? Yeah. Earth also will have different faces because of the sunlight that is falling on it. Oh. Okay. There is one more thing which I want to tell you before we go to the next part. Hmm? So we spoke about moon. What is the uh, you know moon has tidal locking with earth. What is this tidal locking? Tidal locking. Tidal locking. Yeah. Something to moon do is, with moon is tidally locked with earth. Um. Is it something to do with water, the seas? No, not exactly. Yes, of course, moon causes the tides, but I'll tell you, I'll give you a hint. Tidal locking is the reason why we are able to see only one side of the moon every time. Um, Basically, that connects the earth to the moon. I don't know. No. I'll show you something. Yeah. About astrophysics, the best part of teaching astrophysics is you have a lot of content that can be shown. Hmm. Moon. You have two sides of the moon. 
near yeah. far side which is the side that you always see on the sky near side yeah why don't you see the far side of the the, the far side is basically the back side back side yeah. was only seen by these apollo mission people when they went around the moon they could see the far side but yeah. can't we see the far side of the moon um because that's the way it's facing earth it's like rotating like this you know that moon is also rotating yeah oh, it's also rotating but still why aren't we able to see the far side you have to think you have to think like a scientist here in my students, I make them think like a scientist who have to get these things. Because these are the only topics where you can think a lot. In force, work, energy, you can't think much. It's just this, this, this. But here, there are a lot of thinking that you can put in. So my question is, Earth also rotates, Moon also rotates. But still, we can never see the far side of the Moon. Because Earth and Moon rotate at the same time, like the same way, so they can't see the other side. Okay, can you same way you are saying? Yes, or they rotate to the same speed and in the same direction, so I can't see. Okay, I will give you a hint. What is the time of time period of revolution of moon around? Um, moon around hmm. thirty days, no? Twenty-eight, approx. Twenty-eight. Okay. 28 days. So that means moon requires 28 days to go around earth. Mm -hmm. Complete one revolution. Yeah. Now I'm going to add one more statement which is going to complete the tidal locking. The time period of rotation of moon is also 28 days. Oh. So what does it mean? What does it make? So... Are you able to imagine? Also, hmm? Are you able to imagine the situation? Yeah. So by the time moon reaches the same spot, it's the same shape, like way. Like, I don't know. Like what are you seeing here? Hmm. Only one side of the moon is being visible to Earth. Yeah. It's like the face is like this. It is like the moon is like camera going around the sun. Then how is it? It's not turning all the way. Oh, it is. Okay. It is turning. It is yeah. turning. But the revolution period is equal to rotation period. That's why it appears. So that's why there's no, it like cancels out. So it's yeah, the same. Yeah, exactly. That is the reason why. You see, oh. look, you look at the face of the moon. This face of the moon is always facing towards the earth. Oh, and that's the that's... near side which faces towards the earth. Okay. Okay. Now, yeah. there is one more thing that you have to be explaining me. Okay. This is how you should study astrophysics. You should be able to explain a lot of things. These things are not there in your textbook. As I told you, I specialize in this. I want to make my students best in this. Hmm. Oh, uh, I showed you the different sides of the moon, right? Yeah. Next question to you. Why the near side is so clean and why the far side is so, you know, crater type, you know, like very rough? Um, oh, yeah. So, because the near side is like, is able it reflects light from the sun. It is um even far side can reflect. This far side image was taken from science. Scientists who went far side, but light is getting reflected from there also. Mm. Don't tell me that the light from the sun polished the earth surface now. Watch mm. it. Yes. It's yes. due to the ice. There's ice in the moon. Do you think that this is going to make sense if ice is there? There should be uniformly both the sides. I know uh, ISRO went, ISRO Chandrayaan 3 went to search for the ice in the southern southern pole. Do you know that? Yeah. And they found ice? 
but ice is not the issue here. I don't know. Sure. Moon has been saving us from a lot of meteor strikes. Oh. Uh, you know? Yeah. When meteor strike happens. Oh, yeah, because moon is always rotating around the Earth. The yeah, back, the back side of the moon is getting hit by meteors all the time. Oh, front okay. side cannot hit because if the front side has to be hit, then the meteor has to go from Earth to moon. Is that possible? No. no. If we send rockets and bombs on moon, then only the front side of the moon will be distorted. We don't yeah. know. That. But how yeah. the meteor strike? Back side of the moon is getting the meteor strike highest. Oh, okay. So those meteor strikes have saved us from, you know, saved the Earth in many cases. So oh. the back side of the moon has been always been under meteor strike and that is the reason why the back side of the moon has been you know lots of craters a lot of craters have been found but the front side of the moon has been clean because it has been always facing us mm, okay okay it has been always facing us so that is the reason why it's been happened so that means if at all if that that means if at all there is a meteor strike on the earth okay yeah it'll be in the point which is opposite from the moon. If it is inside yeah. point of the moon, will it strike? No, right? No. Moon's back will take the hit. But if it yeah. is from the other side of the Earth-Moon combination, then Earth will get hit. Okay? Yes, sir. Right. So this is the story of moon and the Earth. <laughs>